Good morning and welcome to worship at the First Congregational Church of Hendersonville, North Carolina. This is our worship for the first Sunday after Easter and we are worshiping in the beauty of God's beautiful earth in honor of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which is April 22nd of this year. I am Carla Miller and I am joined by Mark Acker and Michelle Skeel on Native Flute. And so now I invite you to open a window, um, listen to the birds, um, light a candle and set a sacred space as we continue together with our prayer for centering. Let us pray. With our breath, we bring silence to our lips our minds, our hearts, our souls. With our breath, our senses deepen to stillness. Holy love, calm and center our very beings. Sweet mystery, surround us with your peace. Amen. This is Lynx, he's our church cat. Today is Holy Humor Sunday. The first Sunday after Easter has um, been known as that because in the early church, that first Sunday after Easter, uh, the people of the church would celebrate with joy and laughter, with parties and shenanigans to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Um, the custom of Bright Sunday, which is what it was called Bright Sunday, came um, from early church theologians who said that Easter was God's supreme joke played on death. So they had some wild parties. They would drench each other with water. They would sing and dance and tell jokes. So today on this holy Sunday of bright Sunday of laughter. We wanted to share some joy with you. Will you remember me in two minutes? I'm pretty sure. Knock knock. Who's there? You already forgot. <laughs> what do you call a head with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynx, and I've got a joke for you. What do you get when you cross a ball and a cat? A fur ball! <laughs> hey everyone, why does Humpty Dumpty love autumn? It's because he always has a great fall. Why was Shake the Fruit of Seven? Why? Because it's seven, eight, nine. So what do you get when you put a vest on an alligator? An investigator. <laughs> what do goats put on their bagels? 
screen cheese. Hey everyone, what's the easiest way to get straight A's? Use a ruler. Lynx here again with another joke. Why do cats always get their way? They're very persuasive. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed these wonderful little videos and that you can find some joy and some jokes to celebrate this day of worship. He lives across the street and he just wandered through the yard and so I wanted to show him to you today but he wants to go so we'll let him go. Our contemporary reading today is The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's life may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought or grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me that they are waiting for the light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and I am free. We have two scripture readings this morning and the first one is from the Gospel of Mark chapter four. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind them, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. And then suddenly a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion, and the disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Jesus got up and rebuked the waves and the wind and said, Peace, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Our second reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your rock and your redeemer. I recently came across a cartoon that showed two people talking with one person telling the other, my desire to be well informed is currently at odds with my desire to stay sane. That, in all honesty, captures how I feel a lot of days. There have been many days lately in which I've been feeling worn down. My heart breaks for all those who are sick, for the families that are grieving, and for what our healthcare workers and others are going through. And then I also worry about people in our church, my friends and my family. I worry about myself and whether I will get sick. With all that is going on, I find myself searching for peace in the midst of the storm. In the story that Carla read, Jesus was seemingly at ease in the midst of the storm when everyone around him was frantic with worry. After the disciples woke him, Jesus said simply, peace, be still. And the wind stopped and the waters became calm. I can't help but wonder if those words of Jesus are among the most important words that I and maybe some of you need to hear at this moment. 
peace. Be still. I've wasted a lot of energy on fear. Fear of what might happen, fear of not being good enough, fear of people knowing the real me. I am, unfortunately, an expert on fear. And in this time in which most of our social events are not happening, I have the space to worry and the time to ruminate on what has happened and what might happen in the future. You probably know the story about the old Cherokee man who is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside of me, he told the boy. It's a terrible fight between two wolves. One wolf is evil. He is anger, guilt, and fear. And he continued, the other wolf is good. He is kindness, faith and peace. That same fight is going on inside you and inside every person, he said to his grandson. The grandson thought for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which one will win? And his grandfather, the old Cherokee man, replied simply, the one you feed. In my life, particularly at this time, I want to feed peace, not fear. I want to feed forgiveness, acceptance, kindness, and love. Everything I've read this week suggests similar ideas for maintaining our emotional and physical health in this crisis. Things like getting enough sleep, staying away from excessive media, washing our hands, wearing masks, and social distancing. But I've also resonated with those wise persons who have suggested the importance of being kind to ourselves, recognizing that we are all living with grief. Things like getting out into nature if possible, being careful to avoid self-medicating by feeding our addictions, and reaching out to others when we need help. But perhaps the most important advice that I've been hearing is the importance of making time for meditation. That is, the importance of taking time to be still in the midst of the storm. Some of you are world-class meditators, but for those of us who are not, I want to suggest that we might want to reconnect with the Buddhist loving kindness meditation, something I shared with you a few months ago. But it's been ringing in my soul as something that could be helpful for me and maybe for you at this moment in time. It's simple and it can be prayed by children as well as by adults. So here's how it goes. Find a place that is comfortable Become aware of your breath. Clear your mind. And then, when you're ready, pray this prayer. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I be peaceful. Then, when you are ready, say this prayer for a loved one then for a neutral person, then for a person with whom you struggle, then for a specific group of people or a situation in the world that is weighing on your heart. So in this moment, I would like to pray, may the healthcare workers of the world be happy. May the healthcare workers of the world be healthy. May the healthcare workers of the world be safe. May the healthcare workers of the world be peaceful. I feel sure that praying this loving kindness meditation each day will bring peace to our lives. 
and will contribute to bringing peace to the universe. Lastly, as you may remember, my mom had a poodle named Daisy that she loved. Daisy is also my sister's dog. A while back after a night of storm similar to what we experienced last Sunday night, I called and asked my sister how Daisy did with all the noise of the thunder. My sister said, Daisy was shaking because she was so scared. But then I just held her next to me as tightly as I could. And after a while, she stopped shaking and she was okay. So, dear friends, in these days, may we each remember that we are loved by the God who holds us tightly and says, Do not be afraid, for I have called you by name, and you are mine. And as we remember this, May we find peace in the midst of the storm, and may we share that peace with others. Amen. And now we have come to the time where we share the prayers of the people. So I want to invite you now to take a moment of silence and to connect with the divine within and around you and wherever you are, let us pray. And now I invite you to share your prayers of joy and your prayers of concern for the world. And as we continue to pray, we lift up all of the healthcare workers, the first responders, people who are living in nursing homes and in other places where there are a lot of people, we pray for their safety. We want to lift up our beautiful earth that gives us so much joy and comfort in our meditation. And we offer prayers for one another, knowing that we are far from each other distance-wise, but we are connected together in God's heart. All of these prayers we pray. Amen. And with the words of Julian Norwich, let us remember that all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. And now as you go out into your day, 
deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the gentle night to you. May moon and stars pour their healing light on you. Deep peace of Christ, the light of the world to you. And may God's peace strengthen you always, even in the midst of any storm. Amen.